Well, welcome to Beyond the Bell live from Cardiff. I'm joined by our lead commentator, Michael Stello, and the IBF flyweight world champion, Sonny Edwards. Um, we've just witnessed 12 of the most dramatic rounds potentially this year. Joe Caldina becoming a two-time world champion. Uh, Mike, it, it couldn't have been closer, though, could it? I know. I was alongside Sonny and Darren Barker, world champions both. And at one stage, Sonny said, this is what world championship boxing is all about. And he's been in there. So, you know, my judgment alone, that's, that, that shows you how special it was tonight and time and again the action swayed one way and then the other and you know you thought one man was on top then the other responded in their very different ways in their very different styles and look at the end there was an eight round stretch on the judges scorecards mm -hmm. one had Rakimov winning by five another had Joe winning by three so that's in the end that's how difficult it was to score you know we, we've got just a tiny view almost the same as the judges on one side of the ring you can see a different fight from another side of the ring but ultimately you look at that last scorecard and how mm. agonizing was it waiting mm. for that last scorecard when david diamante said 114 i thought he was going to say 114 114 it's a draw essentially it was without the knockdown so that that knockdown changes that last card and shows the champion Sonny, I think you will know this more than us, but every fighter at some point in their career in the pursuit of greatness has to leave a little bit of themselves in the ring. Joe Caldina probably did that tonight. Shavkat Rakimov, his body language after, he definitely did that tonight. Yeah, I mean, that fight for both of them was mentally, physically, emotionally exhausting, I think. The amount of just sheer effort, punches thrown, volume, punches taken, both men, are going to wake up tomorrow and the day after and the day after getting progressively worse for the next few days like they've just been run over by a bus or two um but joe cordina to to become a two times world champion with the the, the way he won it the first time the, the the ice cold knockout finish and then the way he's done it the second time is probably the two ways you would ever want to win a world title for the grueling war and for the oh yeah there's no way he's gonna knock him out boom second round you're gone do you know what i mean so what a career Joe Cordina has, what a fighter Cardiff and Wales have. Um, someone I've known and looked up to and been a friend of mine and mainly my brothers for years and years on GB, traveling around the world. So it's, it's quite mad and surreal to be sort of sat there commentating a world title fight as a world champion and my friends in the ring fighting for his second world title in his hometown and doing it. And we was on GB together however many years ago. Mm. and. It's surreal, and, and, and it, it is almost surreal, the only way I can put it. There's some commonalities between you and Joe Cordino. I think sometimes when boxers are particularly good movers, have got a very high IQ, can pick shots from, from any angles, that people maybe assume they do that because they haven't got the dog in them. And it takes a fight like that sometimes to bring it out of fighters like yourself, fighters like Cordina. Mike, was it important, although it must have been tough on Cordina, may have taken something out of him, that he got to show a little bit of what he's really made of tonight? He did, and I said early on in commentary something that, that Joe had said in an interview with Matchroom during the week or, or, or maybe a fortnight or so before him, where he said, you have to take chances against somebody like Rakimov mm. and nobody achieves greatness without gambling. That was his phrase, and, it, and it's almost poetry. And at one stage, Sonny came back and said, well, there's, there's different ways of gambling. Um, and, and, and that's absolutely true. But what, what we saw there tonight was, was just really special and to watch it from so close up even for world champions as i say i can't i can't count the number of times these two sonny and darren applauded at the end of a round yeah. they just put the microphones down and, and and applauded and the you amount know? of times i jumped out my seat and <laughs> you know the worst thing about me is i'm very reactive so you know when i'm actually watching and i'm in the fight <laughs> i'm doing this as I'm reacting because I Between him I and Darren Barker, Mike, it. his commentary and his babysitting as well, isn't it, mate? But, I mean, what, what an amazing... I, 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 I need a head guard head guard while I'm commentating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know. Because <laughs> then thinking about it, I mean, look, we're in... We're not yet through April, so we've barely had a third of this year. Mm. Joe Cordina last year, in most people's eyes, had the KO of the year. Yeah. He might have the fight of the year this year. How many, how many fighters in history have had those in successive years, yeah. you know? And, and a world title victory For in both successive years. <laughs> He's yeah. not bad business. In his own town, no, <laughs> it, it certainly isn't. Um, Sonny, I know you're a bit of a student of the game, not to put you on the spot too much, but there's been a, a few decent champions that have, have changed hands um, in this division. You've got Oshiki Fosu, who looked really good against Ray Vargas uh, a few weeks ago. Um, Hector Luis Garcia, of course, lost to Javonta Davis up at 135, but retained his belt at, at 130. And, of course, Emmanuel Navarrete, who exercised his right with the WBO to come up and, and fight for the title and, and win it. Um, Eddie was sort of teasing there, a unification. Is there any, any of those names you think that would, that would be the one? I'm not sure. Uh, there's two of the names there that, like, 
I'd be lying if I said I had too much information yeah. on, but Oshaki Foster, very good fighter. Yeah, he's good. Um, he boxed on the same card as me in, in Dubai, and genuinely, I was very, very impressed. And, and he's a problem in the division mm. since become a friend of mine, but genuinely, I think he's a hard fight for anyone at the, at the weight. Um, but Joe Corrino wants to be the best. Joe Corrino is a fantastic fighter. There's other good fighters in the division. They've all got to come to a head. Me personally, what I would like to see next is Joe Corrino versus South Barrett in yep. Manchester Arena. I think, you know, taking Joe out of, you know, the 3,000, the 4,000, putting him in the 10, the 15,000. Zelfa, big domestic fight. He's looked good. Both boxed at world level. They have a mutual opponent. Mm -hmm. Joe should have a lot of confidence for that as well. So, yeah, I think that's the fight that makes perfect sense for me next. Spoke to Zelf about it on the phone late last night about the fight that he had with Rakimov out in Abu Dhabi. And until his eardrum went and his legs went, he was doing very well in that fight. He'll take a lot of confidence from how close that was. And he'll believe that if he can get things right, he'd have a chance against Cordina. And, and certainly on tonight's performance, he's earned a shot too. He would, but even, even assessing the names that you've just been talking about, I think what Joe's got is, for me, two, two key factors. He can adapt so well. He can box in so many different ways, but also he's big and he's strong at super lightweight. Mm. You know, when he made that decision after he'd beaten Gavin Gwynn to win the lightweight title, he decided that if that's how big they are at domestic super level, heavy, yeah. then uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that at lightweight. So he's come mm. down and he, he, he looks so strong. Mm. The other thing is, it's just struck me tonight, he's, he's got one of those almost freakish, some boxers have them, sturdy faces. He's, uh, he's unmarked. He's taken yeah. a lot of stick tonight mm. and he's unmarked. Yeah. yeah. Similar to Sanchez in um, against Zelfa, he had yes. a red face, but yeah. nothing more than that. Mm, yeah. He took a, a lot of stick. So yeah. yeah, some fighters just seem to, I don't know, yeah. bounce the gloves off their yeah, face a little yeah. bit better. Yeah. Sonny, always a pleasure, Mike. Thanks for your company as well, and thank you at home for watching. That's a wrap here on Beyond the Bell as Joe Cordina casts his spell over Shavkat Rakimov and becomes a two-time world champion once again in Cardiff.